Gordon, perhaps we could discuss the difference between mushroom, the the mushroom and the mm-hmm. entire sort of organism. Because I think that, yeah. that might be something that Absolutely. I know it's a little bit basic, perhaps, but I think it's important. No, it's it's a really important distinction to draw because I think people get totally confused. They see me pick a mushroom. They're like, you're killing it. And I was like, no, like if you saw someone picking an apple off a tree, would you assume you're killing the apple tree? Right. No. You could be affecting future generations of that apple, but that's not what's happening. Um, the mycelium is this sort of fluffy white hairs that are composed of hyphae, which are these long tubular cells that are all kind of connected. And that runs through the soil, that runs through the wood, that runs through whatever the substrate is that they're growing on in conjunction with the roots for those ectomycorrhizal mushrooms. And that is sort of the existing body of the fungus. It is growing, it is seeking. It's an amazing structure that kind of defies our human imagination because it doesn't have a central nervous system, brain, anything like that. And yet it can make intelligent decisions about which direction to grow, where competition is, how to seek out food. It has, it displays memory because it knows exactly where to find food time after time. And so mycelium is a very dynamic, but amorphous structure. It's not distinct. It's just kind of fuzz in the ground. And that's part of why we have a hard time recognizing because we Mm -hmm. people see mycelium all the time, but don't actually recognize what it is. If you've been tearing up your garden bed and you have a chunk of sort of wood that comes out, it's got a little white fuzzy stuff on it. That's the mycelium. Um, What happens is when the mycelium decides that it's running out of nutrients or it has all the right conditions to uh, reproduce, it felts up a bunch of those tiny little hyphal threads and makes little proto mushrooms uh, called a primordia. And that's just a bunch of those threads all sort of whipped together. But at that point, it has all the components of a mushroom from like a tiny cap and tiny stem and tiny like proto gills. And then that that hyphae swells with water. Mushroom grows up out of the ground, sort of lifting hydraulically. And sometimes you'll see mushrooms just absolutely pushing their way up through the ground. Um, There's a common one you see a lot in garden bed mixtures called pizolithus or a dye ball. And it's kind of like a hard little black thing that'll pop open and it can provide about 80 pounds per square inch of force. So I've seen it busting through asphalt and concrete. Uh, wow. And it's it, like I said, it's a very common one. And it's, it's really good in conjunction with plants. Um, but it's just funny that it's it's you can see how mushrooms remold the earth as they rise up out of the ground. It's interesting, uh, right? Because I mean, we, we talk a lot, obviously, about plant relationships to soil here. And you know, let's say like a daikon or a tillage style radish breaking down the soil mm-hmm, from top mm-hmm. down, right? And, and we're talking about sort of a bottom up approach popping out. Um, so what what should we know? mycologically speaking about how, how does that actually work? So it, it, they're little filamentous threads that are down in the soil. And the basic concept is that uh, fungi and plants came to land together. If anything, fungi maybe came a little bit before plants, but basically plants and fungi have been locked in sort of a antagonistic slash mutualistic uh, war with each other for literally millions, hundreds of millions of years. And they've co-evolved to actually work together in sort of this mutualistic symbiotic association. Uh, And so like 90% of the plants on earth have mycorrhizal associations. And the purpose of the mycorrhizae on the roots is to vastly extend the surface area of the roots. And plants are dependent on their capacity to take up nutrients and water from the soil to live. And so partnering with a fungi that can grow many, many microscopic hairs uh, of these little hyphal, hyphal cells that are absorbing water, absorbing nutrients, they're then sending that up to the plant in exchange for the plant sending sugars down to the roots. And so it's a it's a good association. Um, you can disrupt it by over fertilizing. You can disrupt it through uh, other types of interactions, environmental stuff. But generally, it's a it's a pretty robust one that just happens naturally because the spores of fungi are in the soil, and the plant is putting out little chemical signals to say, hey come colonize me. I want this. Um, you can see there's certain plants that they've like transplanted from, you know, I know there's small islands in the Caribbean and stuff where they've never been able to get these trees to grow properly. And it's like, well, it's probably because they're missing their mycorrhizal partner that they co-evolved with for, you know, a hundred million years kind of thing. Um, so that it is really like a, a function of, of increasing that surface area on the roots. And an interesting concept has been that there is uh, communication that they've shown that can happen through mycorrhizae. So there's one experiment where they took like two tomato plants and they sealed them in chambers so they couldn't communicate through the air because plants will put out little volatile molecules to talk Mm -hmm. to each other, Mm -hmm. but they sealed them off and they left them connected underground. And then they put exposed one to a pest and they saw that 
through the roots, through the mycelium, they were able to communicate the presence of the pest to the other tomato plant. So that was a via, oh, via perhaps like they measured some sort of like chemical compound in the tomato plant that yeah, was some not sort associated of and it, it showed a yeah. sort of reaction. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that a secondary metabolite that was transferred through the mycelium. So yeah. that whole idea has led to this, this concept of what they call a common mycelial network. And you might have heard this in regards to, you know, trees sharing nutrients. Um, and there's yes. been a little bit of a overstatement in the media about people being like, oh, forests are like one big happy family with all the trees hugging and the mycelium, like helping sharing nutrients on the ground. You're like, well, it's like, it's a nice idea. And maybe in a forest where you have a bunch of clones of the same trees, you'll see that kind of thing. It's been demonstrated basically that if you uh, take radio labeled carbon from one tree, that it can end up in another tree transferring sugars between trees via the mycelial network. Mm-hmm. Um, but in a mixed forest with a lot of different tri- types of tree individuals, if you, like one tree can have upwards of like 12 different ectomycorrhizal mushroom types living with it. And they're not all necessarily like living together. There's a little bit of like a king of the hill kind of like who's on top, who goes okay. first, who gets the most nutrients. Everything is in this like slow motion, like shuffle, push and pull. Yeah. And there's a lot of competition there. So it's it's interesting to think about it. But it's also you have huh. to like maintain the idea that not everything is living in harmony. Um, there's plenty of competition. Sure. In yeah. I, I never I, I love this concept because I've, I've never thought of it that way. I didn't have a, as deep an understanding of how many species perhaps were sort of competing to be the, the dance partner, I suppose, mm-hmm. of a particular mm-hmm. tree. Watch the full episode right here and subscribe for more new episodes every single week.